Holland and Donald partnership puts Hampshire in control against Warwickshire. Hampshire's campaign towards the top of Division 1 took a hit last week as they were soundly defeated by league leaders Somerset in Taunton. But they've got a real opportunity to bounce back against a Warwickshire side whose attack has been decimated by injury. They welcome Oliver Hannon Dalby, Henry Brooks, and Seema Ollie Stone back into the attack. Foregoing the toss, the Bears decided to take to the field first, and the decision was vindicated in just the fourth over. Opener Felix Organ edging the fast bowler through to Hayne at second slip to depart for just one. A good start turned into a great one. Stone once again extracting the edge, a Jinky Rahani caught by Rhodes at first slip for four. But in skipper Sam Northeast, Hampshire have a man in form, fresh off the back of a century against Somerset, and he forged an important partnership with opener Ian Holland. The captain would reach his half century as the score approached 100, the pair going well as the session neared lunch. They'd bring the 100 up in the overs before the interval, going into the break at 111 for two. But when they resumed, the curse of the Nelson would strike. Northeast, unable to build on his score of 59, caught behind off Hannon Dolby. Riley Russo would replace him at the crease and began to find boundaries of his own, batting at almost to run a ball. Holland's 50 would come as the side were on the cusp of 150, just his third half century in first class cricket. Russo would fall to Patel soon after, bowled for 34. The Warwickshire skipper spearing one into his pads from around the wicket. Anirin Donald would pick up the baton, joining his housemate Holland at the crease and batting quickly as he took on the Warwickshire bowlers. Holland continued to play the role of anchor, the home side passing 200 soon after the loss of the fourth wicket. And Donald would pick up a half century as they cruised towards 250, his 15th first class 50 coming from just 48 balls. Try as they might, Warwickshire couldn't find the breakthrough, but more worryingly, they couldn't slow the scoring, the 100 partnership coming from just 113 balls. By the time they reached T, the score was 270 for 4, Hampshire in a commanding position after an impressive batting display in the first two sessions of the day. There would be no let up from either man as the third session of play got underway, Donald continuing in the role of aggressor. But while he'd raced away, Holland had paced his innings well and got his reward with a swept four off Patel, a maiden first-class hundred for the Hampshire man. The two had put on a 150-run partnership, and Donald wasn't far behind. A first century for Hampshire reached off just 103 balls. With three figures to his name, Donald freed his arms. Warwickshire had struggled to make inroads, and they took the new ball at the first opportunity. That made no difference to Donald, who continued to find the middle of his bat, there'd be even more fireworks, another six taking Donald to him within one shot of 150. He'd bring that up in spectacular fashion, pulling Stone for yet another six. Holland looked to join in Donald's fun, and for a time found some success. But finally, with seven overs left in the day, he'd be removed for 143, smashing his previous career best of 58 by 85 runs. Stone with his third wicket of the day. Gareth Berg would be the next man in, and his arrival to the crease would usher in a more sedate spell. The pair now happy to see Hampshire through to the close of play. Donald would finally go in the last over of the day. He was looking to pull Brooks to the boundary when he top-edged it to Hose, out for 173. The wicket would bring an end to the day's play. It had been dominated by Hampshire, and they went in at 450 for six. Donald and Holland's partnership was worth 262, the highest for the fifth wicket in the club's history, eclipsing a record that had stood for over 80 years. It's safe to say when they return home tonight, both will be in a celebratory mood.